Hi, this is Lauren with Veravest, and today we are meeting with David Hardcastle from Voyager Pacific. Welcome. Really, really excited to speak with you. Yeah, great to speak with you today, Lauren. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'd love to just hop right in and hear a little bit of your origin story and how you ended up where you are today. Yeah, so um, it was probably the late 80s or early 90s uh, when I really got interested in real estate. And uh, um, my uh, my mother uh, was a school teacher. My stepdad was a policeman. We never talked about real estate or finance or money or anything when I was growing up. Yeah. And so I read this book, uh, No Money Down by Roger T. Allen, and it was in the late 80s or early 90s. And it just blew my mind that you could buy a property with no money. You know, and uh, I was like, how the heck do you do that? You know, because right. in our house, it was like 20% down. You had to save up and mm -hmm. you had this mortgage and so on and so forth. So I read that book. And then in the early 90s, I bought my first property. It was a bank foreclosure from Bank of America mm -hmm. and a small little house. But, you know, when I toured it, um, uh, I, was, I was like, man, this thing's a wreck. It smells terrible. There's no way I'm going to buy it. It's just disgusting. Right. Uh, but it was cheap. And uh, so I ended, did ended up, end up buying it and uh, fixed it up. And after a few years, I sold it and made a bunch of money on it. And I was like, yeah. wow. So that was kind of those two things, uh, you know, were, were the things that got me going in real estate and, and got me, uh, gave me the bug, so to speak, right. on real estate. And I've been a real estate junkie ever since. I love it. That's a great story. Thank you. Um, so please share with me how you source deal flow. What's your acquisition strategy that you utilize? Well, you know, like anything, when you first start out, uh, it's hard to get deals. Uh, nobody really wants to talk to you. And, you know, you kind of kind of have to prove yourself. But fortunately, I've been around long enough now. And um, our entities have been around long enough that uh, we've proven over the years that we can close deals. And, you um, you know, when you're dealing with brokers or sellers or, you know, anybody else, they want to make sure that, you know, you're not wasting their time and, and, and vice versa. And so we, you know, we've proven that uh, we close deals. So now it's not nearly as hard. Uh, the deals tend to find us. Um, you know, most of the deals that come in, you know, we can tell right away if it's going to be something that's going to fit mm -hmm. and we'll let them know. So we're not wasting anybody's time. Theirs or ours. And uh, any that we decide to move forward on, we probably close like 99% of them unless something crazy yeah. pops up, you know, during escrow. Yeah. Um, we had one just recently, you know, we we're getting ready to close and all of a sudden the seller said, um, you know, I got to come up with another $4,000 on my end to close mm -hmm. it. I'm like, well, we're not going to pay you another $4,000. So you better figure it out. And that one fell through. So, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that happens uh, from time to time. But generally, you know, if it's an escrow, we're going to close it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what would you say are the key markets that you operate in and, and why do you select those markets? Well, you know, we're in the Midwest, the mm -hmm. South and Southeast mainly right now. Mm -hmm. um, that's over the last, you know, five, 10 years, that's where uh, the best deals were and, and the highest cap rates, you know, in Voyager, uh, we focus on uh, uh, workforce type housing. So C, you know, C plus, B minus type properties. Mm -hmm. um, those properties were still very reasonable in that area. Um, and the, the cap rates were still very friendly. Uh, in Voyager 2, we don't use any leverage, so mm -hmm. everything is uh, paid in cash, and we're still getting nice uh, returns on those. So, you know, we're still getting, even today, they're harder to find, but mm -hmm. uh, we're still getting, you know, uh, cap rates in the 12 to 15 percent on, on acquisition. So, mm -hmm. um, and then ones that we buy and fix up uh, might be a little higher. You know, we got to put a little more effort into those to, to get them to where they're rentable. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what we look for in those markets. We also include um, vacant land in our portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got about 1,600 parcels of vacant land around the country, which we sell on contract. Uh, so it's basically like renting land uh, to the people, but some do end up paying it off. Mm -hmm. um, so that provides nice cash flow. And those are in a number of states uh, across the country. Um, and we also do tax liens and, and, uh, and fund two. We just launched fund three uh, mm -hmm. recently. And fund three is actually more of a value add uh, multifamily uh, fund. And so in, in fund three, what we're looking for 
our um, properties that uh, we can come in and um, you know do some value add and increase the value of the properties. Yeah, yeah. Um, and share with me what your investment philosophy is. How do you determine whether a deal is worth doing? Well, it's really it boils down to the numbers. You know, yeah. that's what we look at first. And if it doesn't fit our financial uh, financial model, then we don't even go any further. Um, of course, you know, we'll take a look at the, uh, you know, the uh, visuals too uh, initially, but uh, if it doesn't fit the financial model, then, you know, we don't waste any time on it. We just move on. It's, it's pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, how do you generate value once you've made that investment? Um, I always love to hear what's your risk mitigation strategy uh, that you put forward. Well, a, a few things, you know, with uh, rental properties, um, you know, we're definitely not slumlords. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, our value proposition is we have very nice properties uh, for the class that we're in. Right. So um, what we do is, uh, you know, we take good care of the properties. Uh, people want to rent from us. Mm -hmm. And then once they're in, they want to stay. Yeah. Um, because, you know, hey, when you call up and you need some maintenance, you want to make sure it gets done in, in a timely fashion. And then, you know, uh, if we're outsourcing the property management, we hold the uh, property managers to a similar standard. So we want to take good care of the properties because, uh, you know, we're in it for the long haul. You know, these are long term investments for us. Um, we're building long term reliable cash flow uh, for our investors, um, you know, that they can put in their retirement account and live off for you know years and years because, uh, you know, workforce housing. Uh, is never going away. It's kind of in the middle of the market. Um, you know, when times are good, folks in the D type properties move up to the C's, and when times are bad, folks in the B minus they move down to the C. So it's just mm -hmm. a, kind of in that sweet spot there. So we really like it. Um, there are some challenges, you know, uh, with repairs and maintenance. Sometimes uh, mm -hmm. they can tend to be harder on the properties, but we try to. Um, maintenance proof the properties as much as we can, uh, you know, putting in not carpet in the properties that, you know, you, you got to change every time somebody moves out, um, putting in, you know, uh, hardwood floor, not hardwood, but uh, laminate type floors, mm -hmm. um, you know, those types of things to, to, to more maintenance proof the property if, if possible. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and lastly, I'd love to hear who the key players are that are involved um, that really allow you to execute your asset management and um, acquisition strategy. Well, I always said uh, business is a team sport. You know, mm -hmm. I played sports when I was a kid growing up. I went through college on a football scholarship. Mm -hmm. I love uh, team sports because uh, it's, uh, you know, analogous to life. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to work with different types of people. They all have to work together for a common goal, and uh, that's why I love team sports for kids. It's a great way to kind of, you know, get prepared for life in the real world. Um, and so our team, um, you know, uh, everybody's uh, good at different things. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm definitely not the best at everything, you know, that, that we do, and uh, thank goodness for that. Um, but, uh, you know, John uh, Giomarco, he's our CFO. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, he's been around for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. He's been a CFO for large, uh, large corporations, handling hundreds of millions of dollars on a uh, on an annual basis. Yeah. Um, Vanessa Medlock, she's our COO. She mm -hmm. runs the day to day operations. She, you know, she uh, keeps our property managers in line and uh, oversees the uh, uh, bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew Adler, um, he's our CIO, um, Chief Investment Officer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a young stud and uh, uh, goes like a, a million miles an hour, right. uh, finding deals and, you know, can rip apart a deal and put it back together and, and uh, quicker than anybody I've ever seen. Um, and that's the other cool thing about uh, Voyager is we got, mm -hmm. you know, guys that are like myself in their 50s, uh, John, who's a little older. Um, and then we've got some younger people, too, uh, that, uh, you know, like Vanessa and Andrew. And um, so we got a good range of, uh, of folks on the staff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if anything ever happens to us or someday we want to retire, we got some, you know, good young youngsters to kind of take over. Right. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the next generation that will keep it going. That's keep right. Going. They got to take care of us when we're when we're old. And right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, perfect. Well, David, thank you so much for speaking with us today. It was great to hear more about Voyager um, and to really hear your background as well in the industry. And we really look forward to working together.
Yeah, we're uh, we're very pleased with uh, Verivest and uh, longtime uh, um, uh, clients, and uh, obviously just uh, with our new fund, Voyager Three, um, got set up with Verivest as well. So uh, be doing the uh, the you know the third party administrator for Verivest uh, for Fund Three. So we've got a long uh, long and fruitful relationship between our companies. Yes, it'll be great. It'll definitely be great. We'll enjoy the rest of your day. And again, thank you so much for chatting with us. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.